uh, with Lincoln Baxter, the, the, the founder of uh, the Forge project, to uh, do the integration of Forge One in those days with uh, JBoss tools. Uh, but uh, the things that we will end up now since a couple of years, I've been working mainly on Hibernate tooling. Uh, and so the things that you will see today, uh, they are actually mainly done by, uh, by George Castaldi, who is uh, somewhere here. Yeah. He is the, the leader of the Forge. So actually, he should, he should be here on stage to talk about it. But he lets us have our, our uh, 50 minutes of fame. Thank you, George. <laughs> And he's giving a lab tomorrow about Forge. Yes. It's tomorrow, so. <laughs> so, um, we are still working on the technical issues, but I'm Sebastien Blanc. Um, I'm 50% French, 50% Dutch. You hear the French part with my sexy accent. Um, I work at Reddit as well. I'm um, on the Reddit mobile team. Uh, I joined Reddit three years ago. Um, and yeah, uh, on my slides, you will see my Twitter handle if you want to follow my tools. Um, and now I have to speak until things. Kuhn was really good at keep speaking. Eh? So, uh, so. What you will see today is awesome. That's all I have to say. Yeah, yeah. No, and, mm. oh, look. Yeah. I think yeah. it's better than nothing, but. Yeah. So the colors are a bit messed up, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, but yeah. that was my next part we said. We only have two slides, well, three <laughs> slides, because that's a death conf, so it's for developers. No, because it's, so it's we don't have boring slides. So we just have two slides, okay. and then it will be only live coding. Um, OK. Next slide, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so when you start up a new project, you are facing uh, the whole setup. You have to create a new project, create a whole skeleton. Uh, you have to be careful to follow the right practices. Uh, you have to do boring stuff like setting up your persistence layer, uh, creating your models, creating the relations, stuff like that. Um, and you will probably make uh, a lot of mistakes and you will lose a lot of time. So, you can move to the next slide. We have a solution for that and the solution for that is Forge. So, Forge is a RAT tool for rapid application development tool. And it, uh, it relies on a few principles that are famous in the world. Maybe you know Grails or Rails, there are also RAT tools. Uh, there are what integrated. So you have principle of keep it simple. Keep it stupid simple by don't repeating yourself and by using convention rather than configuration. So that are the three acronyms that you must not say aloud in this order. <laughs> um, so you can use it, you can use this tool uh, standalone. It has a really nice CLI. But we have integration for the uh, three main EDAs, meaning Eclipse, NetBeans, and IntelliJ. But you will see that in the demo that will start in less than a minute. Uh, it's extendable. What does it mean? It's really easy to create your own add-ons. Imagine you have a project and you sometimes, each, each time you add a new feature, you have a whole process, a uh, whole classes that you have to generate, uh, configuration you have to do. If you see that you have to repeat this task any ta every time, well, it could be a good solution to write your own add-on and add it to your uh, Forge tooling. So um, that's what I mean by extendable. Um, and I think we can start for the demo, no? R right. So let's start. My boss gave me a call two minutes ago, and he said, Hey, listen, Kuhn and Sebastian, in 40 minutes, I need a complete bookstore application, Java EE7. I want REST endpoints. I want to deploy it as a microservice. I want an Angular front end. I want everything. And you have 40 minutes. Kuhn, do you think we can do that? No, because the command force is not found anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. 
Let me see what's going on here. Yeah, <coughs> you're already in a. Mm -hmm. You're already in a. You're already in a forge. Um, oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So, so I, I'm a forge was already started. Okay. okay. So, so maybe, uh, I'm using the command line here, and I start forge just by typing. Uh, is the forge. font okay, or should we increase a bit the font? Yeah, can you increase a bit the font? Like this? Like this? Okay. <laughs> okay, so now uh, Forge has started and we can start uh, issuing commands. And uh, of course, it, uh, um, you need a little bit of experience, but uh, if you want to start a new project, the, the thing that you should do is project new. You can actually do this by typing and then uh, when you don't know really what is possible, you, you hit tab, and then it gives you all the possibilities, just like you, what you would expect. Um, so we will create a bookstore project. Right, project right. has been Maybe created. Maybe you can do a LS to show, so it's not that exciting, but it's just a classic Maven project. Okay, classic Maven. I see your palm. Cool. So, um, this is the, the command line thing for the hardliners, right? But, exactly. Um, we can actually uh, use the IDE integration that you talked about. And so let's start with uh, IntelliJ. IntelliJ. So we will import this project into IntelliJ and continue using Forge in IntelliJ. So we import our bookstore app, okay can keep all the defaults. Here we go, awesome. So we have our bookstore projects. Shall we start uh, create a new entity? Okay. For instance, a book, since it's a bookstore. So for creating entities, yeah. um, we start Forge, you can see it below there, it says loading JBoss Forge. So you, you use a, a key combination. In this case, in my case, it's uh, Alt Command 4. And then it, uh, it starts uh, under the hood, uh, starts up JBoss Forge. And then when Forge is started, this happens only once with the first, the first combination. When Forge is started, you get all the possible uh, commands that you can, uh, can issue. So in this case, uh, it's a, a, a new entity a new, book. A new entity. I can scroll through the list, but I can also start typing. I know it's a JPA thing, yeah, so and then I, I, I reduce the, the scope of all the things and I create a new entity. Okay. Oh, just one on this screen, because it's a first uh, GPA entity that we create. Uh, Forge see that, though, we propose to set up our GPA uh, configuration. So here we will stay on the, on the defaults. We can use, uh, we are using uh, Hibernate. Uh, database, which stay on H2, but maybe you can just click on it to show that you, um, here you can basically choose whatever uh, database you want, but we, for demo, H2 is uh, awesome. So here we create our entity book and that's all we need. And it creates an almost empty class for us. It's just all the stuff you see here is for GPA to process your uh, entity. And we just have an ID. So um, I think we can add a field to our book, like a title. So here we just say how we want our field to be called. It's a string. And here we go. It is also generate the, the setters and the getters for us. So, okay. Um, can you show me if it works in NetBeans? There's a question there. Oh, question. Yeah, sure. It's generated by by Forge. Forge. By Forge. Forge. It's great to have George here. <laughs> I can proxy the questions to you. Okay, so now I'm, I'm starting up a NetBeans, NetBeans to show the thing in action here. Over here, it's even simpler. You can just import, open the project, and it will open everything. Um, 
and I have the book thing. Oh, there's something we uh, forgot to, uh, to show. Um, uh, where is it? Other sources, I guess. Yeah. So there, there has been a few resources that have been generated by setting up uh, JPA. Um, yeah, you have the persistence of XML file. <coughs> okay. I don't know if there is a source view on this. I'm not used to using NetBeans, so yeah. anyway, doesn't matter. Um, shall we create okay. a new entity, an right. author? Because a book as an author, and we create an. So here, um, it's a bit different. You have to type there, unless there is something that I'm missing, but uh, uh, you, you have to start typing there, and it starts forge normally behind the scenes. Uh, and it can also take a while. It's kind of a drawback, I think, on this uh, platform. Uh, right. It takes a while for some reason. Yeah. JPA, new entity. And as you can see, we have a similar uh, wizard that is uh, issued or that is coming up. Author. Okay. Good. And let's add a um, name to the author. Okay. New field. Name. Finish. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, um, we can move to. Yeah. Now we're going to the to go to the the, the really good tool because that's the one <laughs> that I'm that I'm working on. Uh, it's uh, JBoss Developer Studio. Now, this deserves a few, uh, maybe a few comments. Um, JBoss Developer Studio is based on Eclipse, uh, and it's, um, it's actually a bunch of plugins. The plugins that are uh, developed under, under the project of uh, JBoss Tools that are uh, packed, uh, packaged and, uh, and integrated in uh, in Eclipse under the product name JBoss Developer Studio, right? Okay. Um, and now we have for the rest of the demo, we will stay on, yeah. on JBoss Tools. Um, imports, import an existing Maven product, project. This is one thing that I don't like about uh, Eclipse. I've come to realize this using the other platforms. Uh, the import of, uh, of projects is pretty hard in, compared to the other ones. You have to really click a lot. Okay. In the meantime, I can uh, start Forge. It can be done on, in two different ways. You have an embedded Forge console here, so you can actually type within your uh, JBoss Developer Studio environment, or you can uh, use a key combination, which in my case it's, is a command for, and then this, uh, uh, this thing comes up that Forge is uh, being started. Now you might, for people that are really, uh, have really a keen eye, they, have, they must have seen that I'm using Forge 3, uh, beta 3 on JBDS. Uh, on IntelliJ and NetBeans it was beta 4. Right, but I assume there's not a lot of difference. Um, it comes from an update that I did and it automatically pulls in the, the latest version. Okay, so the plan was to... To uh, let's uh, add some new fields to the book uh, right. entity, like um, a publication date, and of course, create a relation between the book and the author. So... Okay. And JPA, add new fields. New field and publication date. date. And the type uh, will be date? Java, Java UTO date. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, we want an author on book our have book. Authors, yeah. Uh, 
new field as well, author, and here we can browse, we can search for author, and it should appear here, author, here we go. And nice thing is, uh, here you can select which relation it has, so it's a many to one relation, of course, and it will add the right annotation, uh, maybe you can show it on the author. See it as add many to one. So um, we're basically done. I think that we can. Um, our back end is done. We need yeah. a front end now to right uh, to, so, to do all the crud appropriate. So I, I know I know you are keen on very flashy uh, mobile uh, mobile. Yeah, but uh, let, let's stuff. start old school. Let's start with the old school, old school dirty stuff, right? Let's do okay. some JSF stuff. <laughs> so um, that's one really powerful feature of Forge is the scaffolding. Yeah. So basically it will parse your model and from that, based on templates, it will generate a complete CRUD application for you. Um, so uh, all you have to do is to choose your uh, entities. So I think, oh It's yeah. first to set up as well. So it will set up multiple uh, uh, things for you. Uh, which otherwise, you know, you might have to go and Google because, you know, how do you set up CDI? How do you set up, how do you prepare your project to set up EJBs? How do you, uh, you know, all these things, uh, in which versions work together, which, one, which ones do doesn't. So it's all done in this set uh, setup wizard. And then... Here yeah. we can just do the select all and the magic happens. And now, uh, maybe you can show a bit what has been generated. Okay. And then we are ready to deploy. And we should have our bookstore app. So this scaffolding step generates quite a few, few things, actually. It generates backed beans, JSF backed beans, uh, like the author bean, for instance. Um, it has generated um, a lot of stuff in the web app folder, mainly uh, for the, both the entities, it, create, it generates facelets, uh, bits of HTML that uh, make up your, uh, your user interface. And it will also uh, generate the beans XML, faces config, and uh, web XML files for you. Okay. Uh, now we can deploy that. We will deploy this application on Wildfly. And so all you have to do is to drag drag and drop your project there. That's right. I didn't knew that. You showed me that just before. That's awesome. That way you can deploy your app. OK. Here you can see the Wildfly console. So our app is almost deployed. It is deployed. It's deployed. It deployed. OK. Yeah. So um, we can open a browser and take a look at our awesome bookstore app. localhost on port 8080, of course, and it's called the bookstore. And here, that has been scaffolding, uh, scaffolded for us, so here we can create a new author. George, of course. And George writes books about Forge. Huh? A book about Forge, surprising. Publication date. Today is the fifth. Fifth, yeah. Okay, and here we can select George. Oh, that was to show that we have also for free when we scaffold some validation. And here it says, hey, your format is not correct. Okay, so he will correct that. Right. And um, yeah, we. So we have the create, a read list. Um, we can edit an existing uh, entity just to show you uh, to show that we have all the the, the CRUD functions. So <coughs> for the, I don't know what you want to, to yeah the six awesome okay um, can we add some more uh, constraints, some more validations? Yeah. Because valida uh, publication date, um, 6 February, that is not possible. That is in the future. Can we do something about that? All right. 
Okay. We can do this. Okay. We can add some, uh, some constraints. And we just issue, again, the keyboard combination command star. I could also use this one here, right? Constraint. Uh, or is add. Oh, no, it's not there. Mm. How is this possible? Hmm. OK. Add a constraint, and okay. we'll be use, we will use Hibernate Validator for that. OK. This and is, again, a setup step, right? It, do, just, it just will create a validation.xml file for you. Uh, on the book, that's right. And then we say on which property, well, the publication date, and we want it to be in the past. So easy as this. We have now the constraint. And if we redeploy it again, uh, yep. so redeploy we should have this. Just here, full publish. Yeah, full publish. Now. Of course, the oh. drawback is that I have to recreate my, oh, oops. OK. I have to recreate the uh, Oh, yeah, because we port. restarted. We are using an in-memory database. So each time that we redeploy, well, the database is uh, destroyed. Oh, wait. Oh, you're in search. Yeah. yeah. Publication date, so if you type the 6th of February. 6th Feb, okay. Yeah. And you do save. You got a validation, must be in the past. So that is also handled really easily. So you can really add validation to your application um, without too much uh, looking how Hibernate Validator works or stuff like that. Right. And it's all scaffolded for you. So we have our old school uh, GSF app, but uh, now we want to expose the bookstore app. We want to expose That's that what app. I don't like about it. You have more work because you need to create REST endpoints and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right? I want REST endpoints. <laughs> so everything yeah. can consume it. And yeah. a mobile app could consume our book our store app and a connected okay. object could consume it. So, so do you think we can generate? Yeah. So we, we, we already have what, like JPA, JSF, EJB. Uh, Let's add uh, some JAX RS CDI, now. right. We have all these things now. JAX RS. Okay. okay. So that's really a command that I love. It's, it's a bit of a magic command for me. And it's called generate endpoints from entities. That's exactly what we want. So basically, you choose your entities. Uh, first, you set up your JAX RS, your REST setup. We can keep the defaults. You select your entities, and you click Finish. And wow, it generates the endpoint for you. So for those that, I don't know if you know a bit JuxRS, I'm going to use this one, oh, like a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Don't hit me with it, though. <laughs> so basically, uh, this annotation here pass, uh, that is the rest pass of our entity. And then each method, we can just uh, annotate them like um, when a post request will arrive, it will go into this method. And it consumes uh, JSON and the get. Maybe you can show the get. Uh, um. And the get is over there. There, are the get e produces uh, JSON. And maybe you can show also. Uh, we have that in JDBS is really nice. Yeah. Here it doesn't make so sense have... because we have just two endpoints. But when you have a lot of endpoints, you can browse oh, them one. really easily from here. Yeah. That are small add-ons from uh, JBoss tools, but. So that are really useful. Um, I have, in the meantime, I have redeployed this uh, application. I will oh, you already de redeployed it. Yeah. Okay. So cool. I will I will create uh, a new uh, a few new items here again, or the one item that I always create. at least one item. Uh, yeah. Uh, George. Save book. No. Forge in action. Um, zero. 
Zero, no, six, February, save. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. And uh, let's uh, find out if our REST endpoint is deployed correctly. So for that, we are also using a small tool that is in uh, JBoost tools. That is the web service tester. Um, it's a bit like Postman, if you are used to Postman, but here it's integrated in the EA. So basically here you will fire a GET uh, request on our books. <coughs> and as you can see, we respond. So that means our app is deployed. Every, everything can consume it. Uh, now that we have that, um, shall we scaffold an Angular app? Right. Because we are cool kids. But the problem is I don't know anything about Angular. Yeah. <laughs> With Forge, you don't need to know about it. <laughs> Fortunately, you don't because... Forge uh, does it for you. Uh, I scaffold it on another web route so I can use both on this, uh, at the same time. Um, We'll select everything. Um, it will. Yeah, maybe you can. Yeah. So now if we look in the web app, in the Angular part here, we have a complete standalone web application. Now it's embedded in our uh, Java EE project. Right. But basically, you could take this folder and run it in an OGS server or even if you want some hybrid mobile app, you can just grab that, paste that in a Cordova app, and it's just running. So it's really standalone. Um, and I think we can. Yeah, we have already we deployed it. I've redeployed so it fast. again. So I can. So, so. I can. Uh, now we can go to a bookstore, for instance, bookstore Ang, right? It was. And then you see that uh, yes. the Angular application is running in your browser. Okay. Um, maybe you can create uh, yep. again an other. And it's based on Angular and on Bootstrap. So it's on based on Bootstrap uh, 3, I think. And that means, of course, that it is uh, responsive. So once uh, Kuhn is done with creating a... So this has a different, you can see, it has a different... Um, Validation, yeah, based on uh, the loca the locale. So I need to use 2016 uh, 0205. Yeah, and this is also a drawback that you need to you can actually adapt it by uh, editing the um, the generated class a little bit. Yeah, we could do that because we have 10 minutes left. <laughs> yeah, but we can. Uh, no. <laughs> Let's do the plugin. No? Yes. Let's do the plugin. Let's do the plugin. Oh yeah. yeah. Authentication, security. Um, well, we are working on a pl uh, on an add-on for that. Mm -hmm. That will add uh, Keycloak security. I don't know if you know about Keycloak. Mm. Well, Keycloak is separate authentication server. Um, and it's really easy to, to, to secure your app using that. Uh, it's too bad. I submitted a talk for that for Dev Compass. It was not accepted. <laughs> but, but today, tomorrow, I will be happy to show you if you want. I can give you a small demo of it. And, uh, yes. Yeah. So it's a one shot generation. Uh, but of course, you know, as simple as it is, it doesn't matter really. Yeah. Um, we can uh, show again, because I showed the Angular stuff in Firefox, right? which, which is not so interesting. We have some, uh, something really cool here in uh, JBDS, which is called Browser Sim. I don't know if people know this. OK. Um, yeah, it now opens this on, the, on this file, I guess, that, I'm, that I've selected, but that's not interesting. I want to, of course, use um, my application. Um, Localhost, 
bookstore. All right, this is what you see when you know when you use the the, the normal uh, the, uh, the, the normal the GSF, faces the faces uh, scaffolding, uh, which is of course not very nice uh, on a on a phone or on a on a mobile dev de device. So that's why we actually why we did the angular stuff. So if we do this, then you have the angular version of it, the bookstore application, and as you would expect, you have uh, the uh, the menu there in the, the, on, on your the phone. The hamburger menu. And you can uh, you can just create a new order. That's what it's called. Yeah. Right. Okay. You can also uh, rotate it. Okay. And then it it shows you uh, sure. the other version, the other the other way. So it's responsive okay. and. That's why what, what I told just before you can you could take it take that and put it in a hybrid app if you want the native app for okay. instance. Um. Cool. So um, one last thing that uh, we can show uh, is uh, how to you, how you would extend uh, the Forge uh, by creating a Forge plugin, and a Forge plugin is nothing else than a project. So the way how you start is just uh, by creating a new project. Um, hello world, right? We don't, we don't have the time for the key cloak plugin. Um, and then you uh, have to select a, a different project type, which in this case would be a forge add-on. Okay. We, ju we just accept all the defaults, I think, yeah. And then it creates the Hello World uh, project. And then uh, to create an actual command, you use the um, forge generate uh, forge add on new UI command. Uh, say hello. Um, Command name, I don't know. Say hello. Demo. Okay, finish. And what it does, it uh, creates a template uh, class in which you can, uh, in which you see that there is a, a UI that can be initialized and an execution method that by default uh, results in a in a, in the basically, that is where you will put all your custom logic, uh, like okay. generating files. And of course, because we are because we are curious as to how how to put this in, in uh, to work, we can uh, do this by um, forge build and install an add-on, right? And then it will behind the scenes invoke a Maven build of this uh, of this project and. Install it, and then the next time we hit uh, our key our key combination, then it will. will hello. Demo. Demo. Yeah. Demo. Okay. It's there. Say hello. Right. And the command. Greatest add -in. Now the the interesting part is that um, if you go back to your command line, uh, yeah. Then. This project is uh, in another location. Uh, soft software. Workspaces. Hello world. Okay, now we're in this project. Yeah. Uh, we can do the same here, right? Um, what is it called? Forge? No. Add-on? Uh, build and install. And there it does the same thing. So we can just uh, afterwards, we have the say hello here available. Mm. Okay. 
course, to make this really meaningful, you would have to add UI and, and, and in the execute method, uh, uh, do something really useful, like uh, create, creating uh, some XML, some XML file, or, or adding something to a POM file, or that kind of stuff, right? And you right. can, well, if your add-on is on Git, GitHub, you can install an add-on by pointing to the Git account. Exactly. Um, I think it's time for the... Yeah, I think we probably uh, did everything we wanted we to say. We have a slide for the questions. Uh, I don't know if, I'm, if I have it. I need to, review, to refresh no? this or... Oh, just refresh. It should be refresh. there. Refresh? <laughs> Wait. Four? Oh, you can scroll. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Is it four? No, it doesn't work. Okay, you uh, it? for me, I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. But we have a nice quote from yeah, the hotel. Nice, uh, but you know it by your head. No, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, don't judge a man by his questions, by his answers, by ra but rather by his questions. So meaning, and it's, a, it's, it's by Voltaire. So this smart guy tells us that it's actually, you shouldn't judge me because of what I answer you on your question, but I should judge you because of what you question. <laughs> All right. So, are there any questions? <laughs> yes. When you manipulate the project, do you have a method model for the add-ons? Do they work on text basis, or how would I implement something like that? Yeah, so they, they work on a text basis. Of course, there is. If you do uh, Java generation, then... Uh, you have the Java, then it's a Java, the Java add-on with its API, uh, the roster actually add-on with its API that you're using, which has a, a meta model. But um, uh, there is no, uh, for, for the rest, there is no specific meta model used. There's nothing proprietary or something like that uh, that is used. So, yeah, no. Okay. It's purely text-based. Oh, the only thing that is probably important, uh, for, even though there is a Gradle uh, way of doing stuff, uh, which was contributed, but uh, yeah, the the, the Palm, Maven Palm file, file projects are the most mature uh, things to do, right? Uh, no, I meant uh, not the project structure. I meant like uh, if I um, if I decide to develop a Maven Palm file, uh, what kind of plugin that would add, uh, I don't know, something to JaxRS? Then I would just like to change the metamodel, the JaxRS stuff, and it would be added. No, 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 no. no. Okay, so we went. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, final contribution. We're out of time. Yeah, okay. So, so if you have any other questions, we are hanging here today and tomorrow. And if yeah. you want to uh, do this hands-on, uh, most of the things that you see today uh, will be will be done to tomorrow in uh, in the lab, right, uh, lab. Ford, George? And this afternoon, uh, Bruno will also give a talk about Swarm, and he will be using Forge heavily. So. With the latest add in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I have another one, so maybe this one is. You know, just. just. Mm.